This video is sponsored by Hotspot Shield, a VPN to protect your privacy, data, and freedom to browse censored websites. Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and welcome to my update on the late 2013 Apple Mac Pro. You can see it sitting here at the back of my desk. And since you saw this particular computer last time, it's actually moved location. It used to be in the studio, and I had it in the studio for the initial unboxing and for giving you guided tours around the machine, some speed tests, etc. But now it's transitioned into the editing room, which is where I'm recording this video, and it's integrated fully into my daily workflow. So all of the videos that I produce for the Geek Noise channel are produced on this machine. All of the graphics that I produce for both the uh, Geek Noise channel and also the Geek Noise website and other projects are produced on this machine. And all of my other work that I do online, apart from when I'm using my MacBook Pro, which is over there, is also done on this machine. The Mac Mini has remained in the studio setting and that's hardly ever used apart from the odd presenting sort of occasion when I need to show you something on the computer whilst I'm in the studio. So before I tell you how this has been performing and, and really how it has fit into my sort of workflow, I just want to give you a quick rundown on the setup here. So obviously the Mac Pro sitting here, this is a six core Mac Pro. It's got 512 gigabytes of flash storage. It's got dual graphics cards in there. It's also got 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's been upgraded from the uh, standard 16 gigabytes that Apple supply this with. I did a crucial memory upgrade, which you can also catch on the channel. Now, sitting next to it is a Thunderbolt display. So this is the, the Apple Thunderbolt display. We've got a Forte audio interface sitting just over the back here. We've got a Logitech K750 keyboard, which is a wireless solar keyboard, and then an Apple Magic trackpad. That's primarily it. There's some other bits and pieces connected to it as well. Actually, one thing I will tell you that's connected to it is over here, this is a USB 3 card reader. And obviously I use that to get all of the video off the camera I'm recording this on, onto the Mac Pro. And I found that a lot of people's early criticisms of the Mac Pro saying that you have to add on lots of external devices are true, but it's not really an issue. A lot of people are also saying that, well, you can have loads of cables hanging out the back, it's going to look ugly. Well, I've got lots of peripherals connected to this. I've got the audio interface, I've got a charging cable, I've got the memory card reader, I've got a USB hub, I've got an external storage device connected via the one of the Thunderbolt connections, and of course the Thunderbolt display. And can you see any wires? Well, no, because they're all located around the back, which is how most computers work. So I don't see that being a real issue. Yes, it is an issue if you haven't got somewhere to hide away all those storage devices. Mine are tucked in a cupboard underneath the desk. Um, but it isn't an issue having to plug in external storage. And you're, you're going to do that with any computer. If you're going to extend the functionality of a laptop or even the previous generation Mac Pro, which was a big, big box, you're still going to plug in external devices. That's the only way to really extend functionality of something. So I don't think that's really an issue. I think the only sort of negative, I would say, with this, and you can always wish for more. It's got six Thunderbolt ports, which is plenty, but it's only got four USB 3 ports, and I sort of wish it had an extra couple of USB ports, because if I plug in an external web camera, for, ex ex for example, and maybe a USB microphone and a couple of other devices, I'm soon running out of USB ports. Now, I know I can use the hub. I've got a, a USB... Uh, three hub which has got seven ports on it but when I'm using things like microphones etc I like to plug them directly into the machine it probably makes no difference at all regarding their functionality or the quality of audio you're going to get for example from a device but just something in me really wants to do that direct connection. I think a USB hub is fine for small peripherals and maybe storage devices um, but when it comes to audio and video, I'm, I'm very much wanting to connect it directly into the Mac Pro. So I sort of still have to juggle cables around uh, on occasion. But that's not a deal breaker by any means. So anyway, back to how I've been finding this performance wise. It is absolutely brilliant. I've been throwing lots and lots of video at it. As you know, I produce a couple of videos a day on the Geek Noise channel. And this so far has far exceeded my expectations. It's very, very fast at processing the videos. 
and it's very silent in operation. I've had no issues with any of the OS X upgrades, no issues with, there was some, some problem people were experiencing with uh, external volume, so things like hard disks not spinning down properly. I've experienced no trouble at all with regard to things like that. Touch wood, it's working very, very well indeed for me. I think it looks absolutely superb on the desk. I've received comments about this machine though, uh, especially from other members in my family, they've said, oh, I don't like the design. It's not as nice as Apple's previous designs. Well, I think it's time to move on. There's, there's not uh, any real reason why Apple should produce a conventional looking computer. They're always trying to push the edge of technology. And I think they've produced a really elegant looking design. And if you look at it internally as well, and you'll see this uh, during my in-depth look of the Mac Pro. They've even concentrated so much on how the internals are designed and laid out that you can see the amount of effort they put in and it looks very, very elegant indeed. Everything's very accessible. It's not the most upgradable computer, uh, but for the most part, you will buy a level that you're happy with with regards to how many processors you want and the memory and storage. And then there's probably not a lot else you would actually change on this. You can add memory, obviously I've done a memory upgrade. You can change the internal storage, which again is a good thing. If you're really brave, you can change the CPU. I think the only thing that's very, very difficult to change are the GPUs in there. And would you really wanna change that? Is that really gonna be a bottleneck for what you're gonna use the Mac Pro for? Because when you're specifying what you're purchasing, you're gonna buy in the particular model you want with the GPUs that you want as well. So just in summary, very, very happy with it. If you're looking for a real powerhouse of a machine, it is an expensive investment, but the way I look at it is this is gonna last me for probably three to five years, if not more, of video processing. Divide the cost between three or five years of video processing, and it isn't that much, really. It's a big initial outlay, but long-term, I think it's a very, very good investment. So anyway, that's my update. This is the late 2013 Mac Pro, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see another video of mine, please do click the annotation on the top of your screen now. And also, you can click the annotation on the bottom of your screen and subscribe to the Geekanoids channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.